Hello everybody, welcome back and welcome to week two of this course, The Solar System and Beyond from the End of the World with Dr. Carl. Hi Dr. Carl, how are you? Hi, very well, thank you Dr. Gavin. Are you coping well in this cold uh, Antarctic weather? I'm um, fully rugged up, yes, and there's, there's no wind, so it's just gorgeous down here. It's a nice fine day, we are so lucky, yes. We so are where so do we go? lucky, we have whales and dolphins everywhere. Now, this week we're talking all about the structure of the Earth. Now we are standing in Antarctica, this is the fifth largest continent on the planet. It has 138 volcanoes. Mount Erubus is one of the most famous. It had actually been erupting for thousands of years. Now, we're standing on Earth. As we know, we're studying all the planets in the solar system. We are currently on Earth. Dr. Carl, the Earth has a specific structure. There's several layers. I think there's four layers. Recently, there was another layer. Can you tell us about those layers and maybe what they're made of? Okay, so forgetting the atmosphere, we'll start at the groundy sort of layer. You have a thing called the crust, which is between 6 and 60 kilometres thick, depending on whether it's on land, the ocean, etc, etc. And that's relatively solid. And then it's kind of like a sheet of paper, we're talking proportion, the sheet of paper wrapped around a baseball bit, because the solid bit, that solid bit is, is very thin. Underneath that, going halfway down to the centre, about 6,000 uh, 6, kilometres to the centre, so halfway down is 3,000. We've got something called the mantle, right. and the mantle is sort of like a molten -y, gloopy rock. The geologists don't like it if you call it molten. They say, no, no, it's solid, and you say, but it moves. And they say, it's only because it's under lots of pressure. Ah. So it's sort of molten -y, gloopy is what I can get away with. Amazing. Can I ask you a question while we're on the mantle? Mm. Is this what comes out of volcanoes? The mantle is what comes up out into volcanoes, that is correct. But the stuff that comes out of volcanoes varies enormously on how much gas it has. And the more gas that it has, the more liquidy it is, the less gas, the more slow moving. Ah, okay. And they call this viscosity, right? Viscosity is a technical term, like the viscosity of honey is greater than the viscosity of water. So then you've got the uh, ball of liquid iron, Liquid iron, oh my god, so it must be hot. And then inside that you've got a ball of solid iron, which is hotter, but which is not liquid because of the pressure of the overlying layers. And it is hotter than the surface of the sun. Are you telling me, sorry, yes, that in the center of our planet there is a ball of, of iron that is hotter than the sun in the sky? Why is it hotter? Because it gets energy from the heat of the radioactive decay of uranium, potassium and thorium. So that is the hot ball, which is about the size of the moon, and it is a mirror image of the surface. Um, and inside that we've recently discovered another ball, in, and we're just learning about that. And that's called the innermost, innermost core, right? Innermost, innermost. Now, it's just been discovered this week, actually, so you may want to really do your research and try to find out a little bit about You could be a pioneer. It could even be named after you, a bit like the asteroid that you have in the sky. Uh, well, you're, you're very kind mentioning my 18412 asteroid. Oh, I just had to mention it, darling. <laughs> now, um, Dr. Carl, there are layers below our feet that is clear. However, around me right now here there is gas. I'm sure there's different gases in the air. Is this a layer and what is it called? Uh, it's called the atmosphere uh, and it extends all the way to the moon in the sense that we have picked up molecules of oxygen and nitrogen at the orbit of the moon. Wow. But the vast majority of the gas is between, you know, below about you know, eight, nine kilometres and it is made up of 20% oxygen, which is the stuff that we breathe, yes. remember that 20%, and 80% nitrogen. But the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere has varied enormously going back to the beginning of the Earth. So back in the early days it was mostly hydrocarbons, and then around 3 billion years ago we had photosynthesis being evolved by some creatures, which meant that instead of having to get energy by killing another creature and ingesting it, they could just get energy by absorbing the sunlight. The but own. they had a waste product. Guess yeah. what that waste product was? A waste product, uh, oxygen. Oxygen was this terrible waste product that killed all of the previous life on Earth. My goodness. Yeah, man. and so it, it stumbled around, got low, cellular levels got higher and higher, and then one third of a billion years ago, in the so-called Carboniferous period, when the trees got turned into the carbon of cold, the oxygen level reached 35%, and because it was so high, 35%, not 20%, Goodness you had insects with wingspans of 70 centimetres, and then it dropped down, for various reasons, to 11% um, by the time of the dinosaurs starting off, 220 million years ago, and then has climbed up to its current 20%. The current, the processes that cause 
that make up the atmosphere that to be this or that or something else are biology, in other words, living creatures, and geology, the movement of, that you refer to, tectonic plates, that sort of stuff. Amazing. Now, this atmosphere does lots of things for us. Number one, it helps us to breathe. Plants, trees, phytoplankton, algae in the water, that produces oxygen. We breathe that in. All living creatures do, and they sustain life. But there's another way it protects us. How does the atmosphere help us survive? Is there any other ways? Well, one thing it does is it stops ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation is what they call ionizing radiation. Oh. Ionizing means that it knocks the electrons off atoms. Atoms are very important and that can cause cancer. Oh. And at the top of the atmosphere there's about 10% ultraviolet, but much, much less down here. So the atmosphere protects us from the ultraviolet radiation coming from the sun. But secondly, it has another function of helping burn up the small rocks that come in We'll be talking about that in another episode. We will indeed. We'll be talking about that in week five and how the oh. atmosphere protects us from meteors and asteroids. Now this week, what we want you to do is create your very own Earth. We want to get the layers in there. Maybe you want to use plasticine, you might want to use clay, you can even use papier-mâché and label and research each of those layers and even better, make them in proportion. And then what we want you to do from that point on is start to think about another planet in the solar system and which one you want to start looking at next week. Dr. Carl, it has been a pleasure as usual. Thank you, Dr. Gavin, and thank you, students.